What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today we're going to be talking about the spot price of silver falling back into the $22 an ounce range, but we also need to talk about the Federal Reserve's tapering and rate hikes, an update on the announcement yesterday. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos, subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos, get yourself some DYDSS merchandise, come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, deal alerts, live streams, and a whole lot more. And of course, last but not least, go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Tell three friends this month and Weeble's going to give you at least $150 worth of Amazon stock for free. Everything is linked in the description. Okay, so... Today is Thursday, January 27th, 2022. The current spot price of silver, as I'm filming the video, is $22.92. It's down 57 cents or down 2.43%. Solid red day for silver. Spot price of gold is $18.07.90. It's down $11.50 or down 0.63%. And of course, the gold to silver ratio is in the 77 to 79 to 1 range. But again, that's as I'm filming the video, not as I'm editing, posting, or as you're watching. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So today, I wanted to talk about the silver and the gold. Obviously, we have a nice little selection on display right here. Some fractional gold coins at the top, some silver bars there in the center. Got some miscellaneous silver coins as well. But I think before we can even get into the money, we need to first talk about the currency and even more so the Federal Reserve's meeting and Jerome Powell's announcement. So if you didn't know, the Fed just finished up their two-day-long meeting yesterday regarding the taper and raising rates. Leading up to the announcement, we had our first proper green day of the entire year so far with the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ all doing insanely well. This lasted the entire day up until about 2 p.m., which is when the Federal Reserve released their statement. So first things first, when it comes to the taper, the Federal Reserve has been buying over $100 billion, with a B, $100 billion worth of bonds every single month. This is just a temporary thing. And yesterday we learned that they'll be reducing the bond purchases by $30 billion a month every month through March until the taper is complete. This was initially seen as good news because there were a lot of fears that they were going to pull the rug out from under us by stating that they were going to end the taper sooner than planned and begin raising rates early. But that turned out not to be the case, and the Federal Reserve plans on sticking to their strategy. And then moving on to what is perceived as far worse news, rate hikes. This is where things started to get ugly. For the last year and a half, interest rates have pretty much been non-existent. This was the Federal Reserve's attempt to keep individuals and corporations spending money because borrowing money was inexpensive at the time. The more money you borrow, the more money you're going to spend. That's just how the economy works. We have a consumption-based economy. But this upcoming March, when the tapering is done, that's going to change. According to the Federal Reserve, rates will be raised minimally over time until they're confident they can raise rates to where they should be without counterproductively sending us into a recession. And then, after the release, Jerome Powell came out to speak and answer questions. He was asked if there's a possibility that we could see larger rate hikes or more frequent rate hikes than expected. He told us that it's not off the table. This created more uncertainty, which sent the market in a downward spiral, so much so that it completely erased all of the green that we saw yesterday and sent us into the red, right across the board. Powell also 
made some other comments that didn't exactly help. At one point, he said that high inflation is persistent, which obviously no one wants to hear. And then when asked whether or not the Fed's decision could potentially hurt the labor market, he said something about how with all the job openings we currently have, shouldn't be an issue. Which, yes, that's true, but it's not a good thing for it to be true because all the job openings, that's just a euphemism for a nationwide unemployment crisis. So that was pretty much yesterday's update in a nutshell. Let's see how the market is behaving today. Surprisingly, so far so green. Now, of course, I'm filming this video at 10.30 in the morning, and already we're seeing a massive drop. But overall, we're still up. We currently have the S&P 500 up 0.83%. We have the Dow Jones up 0.96%. And we have the NASDAQ up 0.45%. Like I said, green across the board. But just by looking at that graph, you can see we're taking a little bit of a nosedive right now. So who knows where the market is going to be by the time this video is released around 12 p.m. in the Precious Metals VIP Club or around 6 p.m. right here on YouTube. Who knows what the market is going to look like at that point. My honest expectation is we're probably going to end up closing in the red. And that's not a psychic prediction, by the way. That's just by going by every single day of this entire month so far. We've either opened in the red and closed in the red, or opened in the green and closed in the red. It seems like every single day we end up lower and lower and lower, which by the way, I'm not mad at. But let's take a quick look at some of the biggest tech stocks out there because the tech sector has been carrying the weight of the entire market for the last year and a half. First up, we have Tesla, tech on wheels, down 7.21%. That's for a very specific reason. I'll save that for a different video. Apple, is actually up 1.58%. And then, of course, we have Amazon up 2.13%. So tech, for the most part, doing very well today. Tesla, not so much. But again, that's a story for a different video. Tech is doing very well, especially Amazon. And speaking of Amazon, if you have the opportunity to get $150 worth of Amazon stock for free, you should, by all means, capitalize on that opportunity. Like I said before, if you download Webull and fund your account, they're going to give you two free random stocks just for doing so. And then if you refer three friends to the app, Webull's going to give you at least $150 worth of Amazon stock for free with the chance of winning all the way up to $3,000 worth of Amazon stock for free, which is more than an entire share of Amazon. All you got to do is click that little invite button, send it to three people that you know. It's quite literally that simple. Webull link in the description. Now, moving away from the stock market, moving away from the tech sector, moving away from the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell and the tapering and the rate hikes, let's now talk about the silver and the gold as well, but mainly the silver. I mostly wanted to focus on silver today because of how much it got hammered down. Like I said before, it's down 2.43%. Silver got hit almost 2.5% today, and it's finally back down below the $23 mark. It might not seem like that big of a difference going up or down a single dollar at a time, but percentage-wise, it's actually a pretty big dent. And obviously, when it moves in an upward direction by a dollar or so, it's a pretty big jump for silver, being that spot price is so low at this point. Now, I'm personally happy about this, and as I've been saying for the last couple of years now, I prefer the red days over the green days, and that's when it comes to stacking and, of course, when it comes to stocking. And the reason for that is just because I can get more money from my currency, so you better believe I'm going to be capitalizing on this opportunity. Now, last year, I remember saying that there were a couple of gold coins that I really wanted to get my hands on, and I still stand by that, but if I'm going to be honest with you, I'm taking my eyes off of gold for the time being. I I I'm going to hang on to a little bit of cash. I'm going to save up for a slightly larger gold coin, but I'm going to take my time on that. I'm in no rush to get that new gold. 
And the reason for that is because I want to focus more of my attention on just sticking to silver for the time being. Now, of course, I have a lot of pure silver on display. We have silver eagles, maples, kangaroos. We have silver bars. We have creatures of the north coins. We have some gold up there at the top. One ounce, five ounce, 10 ounce bars, two ounce coins, one ounce coins. But what I'm going to stick to from here on out, and to be honest with you, I can't even envision myself stacking anything different 90 percent that's what i'm going to stick to that's what i'm going to focus on that's where my eyes are right now that's where my focus is i'm lasered in on 90 percent mainly washington quarters because i have found that they're usually the cheapest you can get your hands on roosevelt dimes as well they're they're pretty cheap usually the same as Washington quarters, but for whatever reason, I have a lot easier of a time finding Washington quarters than I do Roosevelt dimes, at least at the local coin shop. Mercury dimes are always awesome. Standing Liberty quarters are always cool. They're not very popular, hard to come by, carry a little bit higher of a premium, but if you can get them for a good price, absolutely. And then of course, when it comes to half dollars, I don't care what type of half dollars they are, I'll stack them as long as they're 90%. That's what my focus is. And as I've been saying for the last couple of days, the precious metals, for me at least, it's my way of financially playing defense. And even though I don't believe I am in the stage of the game where I need to be playing defense, I don't think the other team has the ball. I'm pretty sure my team has the ball. So I'm a little bit more focused on playing offense at this time, but it's still important to have a strong defense as well, which is why I'm going to continue building and continue adding to the foundation of the stack. And the foundation of my stack, for the most part over the last couple of years, has been the Silver Eagle, but that has slowly but surely been transitioning to 90%. Mostly, predominantly, Washington Quarters. And I don't have a problem with that. So I'm going to keep chipping away at it. I'm going to keep picking up a little bit of 90% here and there as often as I can. Maybe not in massive, large quantities, but I'm going to stick to the game plan. And even though now is probably the time to be playing offense, I'm going to stick to maintaining my strengths, which is playing defense. I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to the Federal Reserve's major update and announcement and release yesterday, what are your thoughts? Good news? Is it bad news? What do you think that it's going to do to the market over the next six weeks up until probably about the middle of March? I would normally ask what do you think it's going to do after that, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's focus on the next six weeks because these are going to be a very crucial six weeks. So what are your thoughts on that right there? And of course, what are your thoughts on the spot price of silver falling down below $23 an ounce? Head on down to the comments and let me know. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs, in a bunch of different designs. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways every single month, live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free, and there are a ton of other perks as well. VIP Club link in the description. And of course, last but not least, go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. That link will also be in the description. If you refer three friends this month, Weeble's going to give you $150 at least worth of Amazon stock for free with the chance of winning all the way up to $3,000 worth of Amazon stock for free, which is more than an entire share of Amazon. Something to think about. All you got to do is click that little invite button that the app has within it. Send it to three people that you know. Bing, bang, boom. It's quite literally that simple. Don't pass up on an opportunity. We will link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to the Federal Reserve's meeting and announcement, and the conclusions that they came to and what they chose to comment on. What are your thoughts? Do you view this as 
more so good news or you view it more as bad news, what do you think that it's going to do to the markets over the next six weeks until we get to about the middle of March when the taper should be complete at that point? And then, of course, when it comes to the silver and the gold, what are your thoughts on this red day so far? It's red for me at 1030 in the morning. Let me know if it's red for you by the time you watch the video. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.